Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to my modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue exploring the STL algorithms library and we're going to look at min-max and min-max element. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into CPP reference. And I'll talk a little bit about why these functions are sort of interesting here and could be used in like a game or maybe if you just wanted to pull out some random distribution. There's actually a really nice example here in the algorithms library. And again, we've explored a lot of the algorithms. So check out the playlist if you've missed something, but we're going to go all the way down here to our... Uh, beyond the sorting, binary, set operations, merge operations, all the way down here to our minimum and maximum operations. Now, previously, we've looked at min, we've looked at max, we've written comparators for them, min element, max element, and so on. But now we're going to look at min max here. And this is kind of a fun example here. So just looking at the various examples, you can see that they've added const expert versions of these functions. So that's why there's a lot of different uh, updates here. But uh, since C++14, you have this function available. And it actually does something quite simple, but interesting when you compose this together with other behaviors. And basically it's just gonna return the lowest and the greatest of the given values. So whether I'm just passing in any two values here, and maybe we'll go ahead and just start with that just to see how it works here. We'll get a pair where the first and the second element, because this is a pair data structure. Let's just go ahead and open up pair here. Um, we basically always get them in the right order, right? So I can pass them in any uh, different order if I want, and I'll get the first and the second member here. Okay, so that's the actual uh, values that we have. Now, it is sort of important to uh, note here that the type is the same here, T for the pair that is constructed and returned, versus if you're just using the pair data structure, of course, you could have a different key and value as is used with something like map. So just something to keep in mind there. Uh, but that sort of makes sense because you're going to be likely returning something, uh, some sort of pair with a min and max value of, of two types that you know fall in the same hierarchy. So anyways, let's go ahead and just start with a simple example there. Let's make sure we include algorithm. Um, and I don't believe I need to include pair here since um, within algorithm, it's already got the uh, include here for the pair type here. So that should be okay. And let's just go ahead and return a pair. Uh, I'm just gonna do of integers here with min max. So just go ahead and put those together and I'll put seven and two. And then let's go ahead and return. Um, oh, let's give this a value here. Uh, let's say we just wanna call this sample one, for instance. And this is part of our standard library here. Okay, so the uh, minimum value here, which will be the first thing. And we'll go ahead and put an end line here, no problem and the second. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a run here. Uh, we need to use at least C++11 for this. C++14 can evaluate this at compile time, but as always, I use uh, version 20 for most of my videos here. Uh, and this compiles, this runs, and we get again two and seven here. So again, it's gonna pull out the minimum and the maximum value. Let's just go ahead and uh, flip these here, just so you can again see uh, with this sample here, if I use S2, and let's go ahead and pop this over here uh, and increment these values. And we should see the exact same thing printed out here. Again, just so you can see the first element is always the minimum and the second is the largest here. Now we can use this with an initializer list as well. So let's go ahead and do that here. And let's actually make this just a little bit easier to read here. Let's put a comma here and then do s1.second just to make these uh, one-liners here. And just so you can see what's going on here. And there we go, okay. And just because I wanna show you the other overload here that we have available, we can pass in an initializer list, okay? So if I have a bunch of values that I'm just reading in, maybe at compile time or for some uh, other collection here, uh, we can use that here, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, try that out. Let's go ahead and do uh, with an initializer list here, one, three, five, seven, nine, uh, two, four, six, uh, oops, six, eight, ten, something of that uh, nature. And then let's go ahead and write this out. So for S3, we have our full initializer uh, list here. Again, let's make sure that we get that signature right. All right, it's just taking in the uh, list there, okay, of integers. Okay, so let's go ahead and see the results of our code here. Oops, looks like I made a little mistake. Um, missing the closing of my right curly brace. Make sure we put that in here. And let's just go ahead and execute this on success. 
and we can see one here and 10 of course is the maximum value um so that's quite nice here okay so you can kind of get an idea of how to use this especially as neat with something like um the initializer list here um but something that you can kind of do interestingly with this um that might be interesting in like the context of a game and that's from the uh, actual example that they provide here Again, let's actually look at um, the complexity. Again, uh, one comparison in the case that you have the simple type, or at most here, interestingly, it looks at the list times three divided by two uh, comparisons. Uh, basically meaning you have to look through every uh, element here. Okay, the simple case is literally just the uh, comparison and return the right pair, you know, swapping the elements in one direction or the other. Um, and then the initializer list here, uh, they're actually going to use min max element, which we'll look at in a moment here. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, but here's kind of the interesting example that I wanted to show you of how you might use this in practice, right? So if I have this vector here, and uh, this represents a range of values, so let's go ahead and kind of mimic that uh, here. Let's make this just a little bit bigger. I'll recreate this example and talk through it here. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a vector. Uh, I'll use the class template argument deduction here so we don't have to specify that they're integers, right? C++ is smart enough to figure that out. Uh, and I'm just going to provide, you know, a reasonable amount of values here, something like this here. Uh, and then we're actually going to use random here. So we need time, which is going to be our seed here. Uh, and if I pass in zero, basically it means the current time. And from the standard library, just srand here. Okay, now there are other uh, random number generators in C++. Uh, that could be a little bit better, but in practice, if you're doing something like a game, this is totally fine here. So let's just go ahead and set up uh, the seed. And uh, now I would probably put in like null pointer here, but zero is fine. Um, and the interesting use here of this function is this right here, right? Where we're going to set up our bounds here uh, from this pair. So standard min max here, basically just saying, okay, the bounds are this size of the vector here okay uh so this in this case is zero or it's one two three four five six seven eight elements here okay so it's going to choose uh some random number mod it by eight to give us a range between zero and seven and then it's going to do the same thing here zero and seven it doesn't matter which one of these is greater or less right because that's exactly what min max does right we get the first element uh, which is the lesser of the two. And then the second is the greatest element here. So that provides a interesting bounds here for the size of this collection here. And then basically what they do in this example is just go through a for loop with your bounds from whatever the lower is and the second, uh, the greatest uh, value here, okay? Of these two random generated values, okay? Now, again, this returns a pair. Now I'm going to do something just a little bit different just to show you something that's different in this example here. Uh, I'm just going to use auto here and call this bounds here. And let's see uh, something new here. Actually, um, uh, bound. Uh, let me just actually call this lower bound and upper bound here. This is known as a structured binding here. Okay, so it's going to infer the type that this is int. I could make it const actually just to make it a little bit uh, better, right? We wanna, you know, learn some of these things here. And then I'll set that equal to my standard min max function here, okay? Which is going to take uh, the some random number generated and mod by the size here, okay? So let's go ahead and expand this out here. Let's do our rand and mod by uh, the vector size. And that'll be our lower range and then our uh, well, oh, the, the lesser of these two will be the lower range here. Okay. And then let's go ahead and just, you know, print out these values first. Lower bound. I'll put a comma here. And the upper bound. Let's make sure that much works here. And then we'll go ahead and just print out, you know, whatever those values are here. Okay. So if we go ahead and run this, looks like it generated four and six here. We'll run it a few times since it's random. Two and four. Again, we're getting random values here, six and eight. But again, you can always see we get the lower bound uh, or the lower number from min max here and the upper bound here. Okay, so this is kind of interesting here, uh, zero and three. And then we can actually print these out here. So for, uh, let's see, uh, size T, uh, we'll have some index here. Well, the index is less than, uh, and that will assign it to our lower bound. But while it's less than the upper bound, index plus plus, 
And then we can print out from our vector, uh, you know, the different elements here. So let's do V at some index. Uh, and let's just put a comma here for now. And I'll put a C out statement here. Okay, and let's see all this uh, on one line of code here. There you go. Okay, and let's give this a run. And let's see. Well, if we get six and seven, let's go ahead and count here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? This is our range here between if we're at the sixth element while we're less than the seventh, print out the sixth element, and then, uh, well, that's it. So in this case, not a really interesting example, but we'll rerun it again. And this time, our range is from zero to seven. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and well, seven would bring us to here. So this is our range here. Okay. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I, I think that's a nice example of using min max for an actual task where you might want to randomly generate two values based on some bounds and then print out that actual vector here. Okay. Uh, so that's the idea here with min max here. Now we do have another function here that plays nicely with it. So let's go ahead back here. We've got min max. And just like when we looked at min and max, we had min element and max element, which can look in a range. So not just two values or an initializer list, but an actual vector here. So let's actually look at min max element. Uh, and again, the difference here is that we're just able to provide forward iterators. Uh, so it could be from the beginning to the end or whatever. Um, and then it basically does the same thing. It'll pull out the least and the greatest element here. Okay, so min max element is pretty um, uh, pretty much the same thing here. Just we're able to look through a range here. Uh, and you can see that we are using the structured binding in this particular example here. Uh, and they're just using a vector here. So let's go ahead and play with min max elements here before we close things off here. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do here, min max, uh, and I'm gonna use the structured binding again. I like this here. Uh, const auto, I'm just gonna use L and U for uh, lower and upper. Let's do a little bit better with our variable names here. Uh, and I'll assign that to, uh, again, let's look through this whole collection, but let's make it a little bit more interesting here. Let's put like a uh, negative five here and let's put the greatest element as the first one here, 21. Okay, just to again, ensure that this is working. I won't look from the beginning to the end of this structure here. And I wanna actually print these out here. Okay, so let's actually print them out and get rid of this here, lower and the upper here. Okay, and I'll put another space here just so we can, um, you know, have a little bit of room here. But again, I'm looking through this whole range now, and it could be any collection here, a list, a vector, whatever, as long as I have four iterator support here. Uh, whoops, looks like I made uh, one mistake here. Let's see here what I've done. Uh, no error. Let's see here. Let's actually spend a moment to debug this and see what it's complaining about here. Um, let's see here. So I've got lower and upper, uh, and this should give us a pair here. Now, I wonder if this is, well, let's look carefully here. Maybe we ran a little bit too fast. Let's see what's actually being returned here. Uh, we're getting a pair, uh, but okay. Uh, but it is of the forward iterators here, okay? So anytime you see one of these gigantic uh, template messages, right? And it's complaining about like operator uh, with the stream. It's basically saying, yeah, we don't know how to print out an iterator here. So if we want those actual values, right? We want to actually uh, dereference the lower and upper. No problem there. Glad I made that mistake here. And now we can actually see negative five and 21 indeed are the smallest values in this range here. Okay, if you wanna pause that and verify it, you can here. Uh, but overall, a really nice uh, function or some functionality. And again, you could do the same thing here where you perhaps use like uh, v.begin and do, uh, let's actually do just another example here. Let's do uh, v.begin uh, plus, uh, and then I'll basically copy this equation here uh, that we did previously here. And I wanna look from the beginning to, well, somewhere within size, but uh, standard, rand mod size here okay so this will give me an iterator in fact let's make it uh let's move it on a different line just so it's a little bit easier to read here um that'll look from the beginning to 
almost the end, right? And return me some range here. Okay, now if you want to verify uh, this here, oops, need one extra right parenthesis there. There we go. We might want to actually like print this out so we can see what the range is that we're looking at, but this time it only gave me one in 21. Um, and that's probably because, let's see, it looked at least as far as, well, I don't know, maybe here, right? It didn't look at least as far as the negative five here. Uh, so we could run this a few times. Let's see if it gives us, yeah, five and 21 here. Just depends on what that random range is again. But again, we could use the same trick uh, for our min max, uh, like we did with min max element and actually uh, do v dot begin and then randomize this as well. Okay. Um, now we might have to be a little bit careful here. Um, let's, I think these need to be the first and then the last element. So these might have to have some ordering. Let's see. Uh, elements are confused using the binary. Let's see if there's, there should be like a, a note here on like, I don't think it's going to sort the iterator because we don't really have any way to know like if I provided them in the right order. Um, so I think we still need to provide them in the right order. So you might have to do a little bit more work, meaning that this is the start of your range and your end of your range. Um, so uh, again, if you're, if you're randomizing things and want to use this trick, maybe a little bit more work for that, but could still use the same trick. So anyways, with that said, folks, uh, let's go ahead and do a brief recap here. We learned about returning a pair from min max, super handy. We could use it with initializer list as well. And there's a sort of nice trick here that I would maybe use in a game or something to select a random range. Um, it's kind of like adding a little bit more randomness if you have some pseudo random numbers already. Uh, and then you would just want to select a range of those to perform some actions, uh, right? If these aren't numbers or whatever. Uh, and then we could also use min max element to work on any range and we could get a little bit creative with this as well. Alrighty folks. So with that said, hope you enjoyed this lesson here. If you're interested, you can follow along in my C++ programming uh, lessons here that are free on YouTube. And newly, I've got this course here as well. If you just want to start C++ from scratch, uh, maybe, you know, this is diving into it, but if you just want to start with the basics, do a little project, I've just released a course here. So feel free to check that out. So anyways, folks, with that said, hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you as always for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you folks in the next video.